Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to imdb, that's imdb.com, look up two opinionated podcast and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress, model, Tammy Aaron with me. So welcome, Tammy. Hi. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, no, I was thrilled to have you on the uh, show. You know, uh, Pippi came out when I was a teenager, you know, when I was growing up in the 80s, and mm -hmm. we loved it. It was it was so well done. You wouldn't think, like, like, you wouldn't think that a teenage boy would necessarily love Pippi Longstocking, but I did. Well, yeah, I mean... The it was described as like Pippi is the uh, like what the girl that guys want to hang out with or girls want to be like something like that. So yeah, yeah no, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I, there's a lot of guys though that tell me that they had their first crush on me, which is so funny. Well, that's probably true. You know, if, and if, if we grew up in the '80s and and your character was what probably 11, 12 years old. Yeah, and then also she was a pirate, so she's like super cool and a princess and all the gold coins, you know, strongest girl in the world. That's so. true. Yeah, yeah, for a boy, especially like a teenage boy, that's that's like the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, so Tammy, let's start this way. Uh, tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. You know what? Was was it Pippi or or you know, was that an accident or had you intended to become an actress? Um, so it was my I was asking my parents about that when I was very young. I got discovered for my first modeling job when I was five. That's I was at early. Brookfield. Yeah. Um, so that's actually where it came from, getting discovered at the zoo, the Brookfield Zoo. I lived in the suburbs of Chicago in Wheaton and Winfield. So I was at the Brookfield Zoo and they were doing a soda campaign for Jolly Good Soda and <laughs> Jolly Good Soda. Anyway, the photographer saw me and went Doesn't to my mom. does sound and, like a soda that Pippi Longstocking would, would be advertising? <laughs> it's really, it's so cute. It's, it's so Midwest. Um, yeah, so in like 10 minutes, I was wearing their t-shirt and holding their can <laughs> and smiling and all that. And then when it came out in the newspapers, I had the biggest picture in the ad. 
And so from that moment, I was begging my parents, I want to be a model. Look, they gave me the biggest picture. <laughs> and so I should do this. When I was six, I told them I wanted to be a movie star. And they giggled and said, you know, of course you want to be a movie star, Tammy. Everybody wants to be a movie star. <laughs> so um, finally, when I was eight, um, the president of the company, Victory Beauty Supply, that my dad was vice president of, Michael Davis, went to my dad and said, there's an open call at Elite elite model management in downtown Chicago. And so you should have, you know, my mom bring me there. And he said, if you don't bet the farm on this girl, you're making a mistake. And so my dad thought, well, all right, we'll go and, you know, see if she gets a contract or see what happens. Yeah. When I went to Eileen Stewart's office, she gave me a contract right away. And in fact, what I said to her was, um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like she would know I'm here. I'm ready to be a model. Like, do you, do That's I get how like, it works? You just show up and now? let them know. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. It was really sweet. So we talked, you know, for five, 10 minutes and then she gave me the contract. She also gave a contract to one of my younger brothers because oh, wow. he also had red hair and green eyes. And he did one commercial Donkey Kong cereal. And then that was the end for him. So, um, had yeah, enough. so was, <laughs> we had the look and anyway, that was the beginning of my career within a week. I had an ad for people magazine that was Texas instruments computers. And I was the model being the little school girl on my big, like, you know, MS DOS computer. Oh yeah. And that's, that's where it all started when I was eight as an elite model. Yeah. That's so young. Yeah, but it was my idea, and I was the one dragging my parents through the door, so it was going to happen sooner or later. Yeah. I'm lucky that it happened then. I'm really lucky because Elite, so I was launched from the same office as Cindy Crawford, and Eileen Stewart, who owned that office of Elite, was so involved in guiding my career, so I was right. very lucky, yeah, in the way that they arranged everything, and I was booking national commercials in my first year you know, which is special. So yeah, it just yeah, all kind that doesn't of usually snowball. happen that way. Um, it can take, no, I mean, sometimes you don't do national commercials. I eventually at 11 was doing international commercials and I hadn't had any acting lessons. It really was just me and I had natural talent and then I was given the opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Well, so was Pippi your first acting role outside of commercials or did you do some, some smaller stuff before then? No, that's it. It was my first. It, that's crazy. Uh, it was my first. Yeah, it was my first movie role, um, television ever. Yeah, all I what I'd done before that was national modeling campaigns and national commercials and one international commercial for Nestle chocolate. Yeah, that's so, a lot of experience coming in. Yeah, no, it's it's not, but there was something about it where it was meant for me. Um, I'm sure that you know that I won the role out of over 8,000 actresses worldwide. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because they cast a uh, wide net for that. <laughs> yeah, they sent Garrison True. Garrison True also was the casting director who discovered uh, Annie, Aileen Quinn, who oh. starred as Annie. Yeah. Um, so they sent him all over the world, auditioned over 8,000 young actresses. When he met me for the very first audition in Orlando, after that, after I left the audition room, he called Kananakan, the director, and he said, I think we found her. And that was after my first audition. And then, wow. of course, there were callback, callback, screen test, final, final screen test. And then <laughs> finally, after over a year, then I was finally announced. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a pretty rigorous process to go through at 11. <laughs> It, it was, but you know, the funny thing is that I was never nervous. I was never nervous at all because I had this personality that was very outgoing and I loved yeah. to entertain people. But with Pippi, I was never nervous, which is rare because I've had other, other roles that I've booked where I was incredibly nervous yeah. and wanted to over-prepare and all of that. And no, with Pippi, it just wasn't like that at all. I was just really excited inside, like hoping that it was for me. What was the best part about being Pippi Longstocking? Um, well, there's a ton of it. Uh, let's see. My relationship with Ken Anakin is very yeah. special. Was Ken Anakin is uh, was an Academy Award nominated director, yeah. a director of over 50 movies, a Disney Legend, Disney Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, 
a member of the Academy. And so um, he directed Pippi. I also, he chose me to give him his Lifetime Achievement Award at Disney. But our relationship, he was like my second dad. And that was really special. With Astrid Lindgren, um, we had a really fun, like, precocious kind of relationship she you can see in our photo shoots Astrid Lindgren's the author of course she's always hugging me and like grabbing me and my yeah, it looks me. like you guys are buddies yeah yeah we had a great relationship yeah and I was so honored I was incredibly honored that she you know that she was um that she approved of me and that she would refer to me as my Pippi she also had a luncheon when I was uh in Stockholm Sweden for the second royal world premiere for King Carl and Queen Sylvia, Astrid had us over to her home and she held a luncheon for us. And she like showed me the window that she was looking at when she, when she writes her books. And, you know, I got to hear all about her children and, you know, Great. who she is and all that. So I think it has, it's a lot of <laughs> my dog. <laughs> it's a lot he of wants, the, he wants uh, some attention. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a lot of the relationship, but also so far I've gotten to travel to 16 countries. So I've been the guest of royalty, princess of Japan, king, queen of Sweden, uh, the youngest United Nations ambassador for United Nations Children's Day for UNICEF. Awesome. Um, yeah. And so all these things that uh, endorsement deals, dolls in four sizes, books in several languages, companies, and yeah. So, do you and, have and some charity. of the dolls? I, I, in fact, do. Yeah, I bring them with me to uh, to the Comic Cons that I do, to the movie yeah. screenings and all of that. The full size one is like three feet. That's the <laughs> biggest one, the life size. And then I think there's 14 inches, 12 inches, there's another one and then there's a keychain. So I actually do have all of those. He's Tommy is running to get, he's going to my office to get me one of the dolls right oh, now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you awesome. can see it. And that's the good cool work, thing about, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, babe, thanks so much. Yay. Okay. So he brought oh, here is perfect. Here, yeah, this one, but here is the life size one. Yeah, that's that's probably close to how tall you were. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But yeah, so this is, yeah. But um, anyway, I want to get covered up by the doll. But now you see. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And then, so there's this one too. There's two different ones though. Because the funny thing about my doll, they released it for my movie all over the world. And that was with Determined Toys, the makers of Snoopy. But yeah. when they released the 1997 Warner Brothers movie, which was the animated Pippi Longstocking, yeah. they then re-released my doll with Hasbro. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't it? Well, the royalties were really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice little perk. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I just, I, I mean, that for me, like what, when you're dreaming of, you know, as being an actress or a model when you're a little girl, of course you want your own doll. Who does that? I interviewed uh, Sam Jones, who played uh, Flash Gordon, and uh -huh. uh, which was awesome. But he did the whole interview standing up in his living room, and he was surrounded by just what looked to me like hundreds of boxes, just everywhere. And I said, I said, Sam, are are you moving? And he said, no, this is just all my action figures. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's all his me, you know, all his. Uh, Memorabilia. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I got a kick out of that one because I'd be that way. If somebody was yeah. dumb enough to make a figure of me, I'd have a million of them. Yeah, I get to see so many different, like, um, when I do Comic-Cons, I meet all kinds of actors and yeah. wrestlers and all that, but. Um, yeah, they all have action figures. It's really fun to see all the different variations cool. and it's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Was it, was it difficult transitioning out of child acting into adult acting? Um, no, not particularly, although I did take a break. I took a break when I was 15, um, because my family moved to San Francisco. And so I just had to wait until I was 19 again. So 
yeah, and when I went back, I did Kill You Twice. And then uh, I started being offered movies and some of them were right for me and some of them I didn't want to do. And then I wound up starting a fashion company. It was actually offered to me. And then I just yeah. wound up becoming an entrepreneur and and knowing that if Hollywood wants me, they'll come and find me. And so they always do. That's kind of a, that's a, that's a pretty great situation, actually. Because yeah, yeah, if they want you for something, they'll come get you. In the meantime, you've got your clothing. Well, I've got my business and I can travel and I have my freedom and I make my own money and yeah. I'm not sitting by the phone going, okay, so are they going to hire me now? <laughs> you know, like yeah. Yeah. it's different. It's different than it is now. Now you, everyone's a content creator. So now you can, you know, you can do that full time and be in charge of everything. But back then it wasn't like that. You really did kind of have to wait for them. Yeah. And I didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I can see why, because this way, you kind of are in control. Yeah, and then I have the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. Do you uh, do you sing? Um, I do. I sang the soundtrack. I also had an, um, I sang in some commercials. Yeah. Brown's Chicken. Um, and then I sang an, an electronic dance music song, an electronic dance music single back in, like 2014, I met a DJ named Dr. Plasticine and we collaborated <laughs> on this fun song called Somewhere in Time. And it was just a one-off, like, yeah, I'm going to be a, an EDM singer now. <laughs> I kind of love that. I just had a feeling that you had some music out there. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it was really fun and I had a great time doing it. And, um, you know, I, I guess that was the only opportunity, the only opportunity I had. <laughs> so yeah, but that was super fun. And then now I also I have a new movie coming out in 2025, Ooh. which is a documentary film called Being Pippy. Oh, I love we, that. Have you have you had people following you around for the last couple of years? <laughs> no, well, we filmed it back in June. Um, and so, yeah, a Swedish film crew from Pink Dolphin from Stockholm, Sweden, they flew in and they followed me around for a week. And that week was kind of cool in that I had a movie screening at the Outsiders House Museum in Tulsa. Yeah. And that, do you know the movie, The Outsiders? No, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's classic. Okay. Yeah. So I had a movie screening there. So they followed me to that. And then the OK Pop Museum, where I'm going to be loaning one of my Pippi costumes to them. And then also around where I get recognized all the time. Then they got to see my real life. I have um, my Airbnb. I have an Airbnb called Pippi's Hot Toad. And so they got to <laughs> go out awesome. of my boat. Yeah, it's really fun. So they filmed me on my boat. Um, they filmed me in my garden. So I'm into gardening. Oh, now. how fun. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So they filmed that. What do that. you grow? Are you growing like fruits and vegetables? Or are you growing? Yeah. Well, yeah. Last year. Yeah. So last year was my first year having a garden ever. What I got, uh, what I did really well was tomatoes and peppers, jalapenos, cucumbers. Let's see. Lettuces, kale. Yeah. This year, though, I have like a whole orchard going in. Ooh, okay. I'm so excited. I am so thrilled. We have three acres. So I'm developing all of that oh babe thank you so much he's bringing he's so proud <laughs> he went and he bought me like 65 so yeah like all of these these are all what are these like these are peppers all of these are different yeah, types yeah. of peppers bell peppers, like sweet peppers. peppers jalapenos then we've got like i got raspberries these are bare root ones oh yeah yeah right then i've got, got some grandkids that would eat those up I, get like four more trays of those. I have like, yeah, I have four more trays of these, like the tomatoes, cucumbers, all the things, blueberries, blackberries, figs. We have a fig tree going into oh, with the yeah, trees. I like some figs. How long does it take to grow a fig tree? That's going to take a while. I think some of these are two or two and three years. The grapes are going to be three years before these are really like 10 feet wide on yeah, their yeah. trellis. So yeah, I'm really for real having a food forest. That, that yeah. is great. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm so I, I, the the soil here is like uh, it's called black gold because it's so rich. Oh right, yeah, yeah. You probably grow anything in it. So, yeah, literally so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway. we, we did some gardening uh, last year for the first time, and and I think my wife and uh, our uh, our daughter lives across the street. 
So I think they're planning to expand on that. So, and we are kind of similar. We did, uh, you know, the peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, and, and they, those are fairly simple to grow. Not that you can't screw them up. Uh, mm -hmm. but when you start getting into the berries and stuff, it gets a little more complicated. So, uh, yes. And I learned, uh, that you have to have two, you get two of them, like the blueberries and the raspberries, you get two. So they pollinate each other. Yeah. Yeah, you and we actually, put in a how about an avocado tree? I I would, but we're in zone seven A. So zone seven in Oklahoma is mostly warm, but we have a frost, like a frost that will kill everything outside that's oh, okay. not hardy, that's not cold hardy. So uh yeah, so I can't, yeah. yeah so I, I have to buy those. But cantaloupes do really well, jumbo watermelons mm -hmm. do really well. Yeah. yeah. Potatoes. I mean, pretty much everything, but yeah, not the tropical stuff. It just Unless tastes I, better when you grow it yourself. It's incredible. <laughs> so true. It really, yeah, it really does. Yeah, that's pretty great. Are you um, still pretty active on the convention set? Or are you hitting a bunch of them each year? Yeah, so uh, last year, I think I did 20 of them. Uh, that's pretty active, yeah. Yeah, and I'm booked out until 2025. One of the biggest ones I'm doing this year. So I'm doing two to three of them a month. But there is something big coming up August 21st through the 25th in Branson, Missouri at the Retro Mania Museum. Ooh. They're having an 80s vacation. So from the 21st, five days to the 25th, Bobby Brown's going to be there. Vince Neal, I'm appearing with Tiffany, the 80s <laughs> awesome. singer, the 80s yeah. pop star. Yeah, of course. Um, Casey, yeah, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh, I'd love that. I should yes. come <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. I am so excited. So I'm going to be there for those five days in Branson, doing all of that stuff. And then this this weekend, I'm flying to Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah, of course. For, yeah, for a Comic-Con. And yeah, it's super fun. I have a great time. The fans are really great. They bring me gifts, flowers. They tell me stories. Um, sometimes it's like really exciting and they jump on me and hug me and sometimes <laughs> like they start crying. Sometimes they scream. So, well, yeah. Cause, uh, for, for a generation of, uh, young girls, especially, but boys and girls, you know, we grew up on Pippi. I know. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah the, um, so last summer started the 35th anniversary. I could not be prouder. That's nuts. That it's been 35 years. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those like <clears throat> 80s and 90s in <laughs> some ways it seems like it was yesterday it you know it but yeah it's so it still long does ago. i know that it it is incredible and like people they so that they feel like it makes them feel dated and i'm like yeah you know don't do the math <laughs> yeah yeah just <laughs> ignore the math <laughs> ignore the math 35 years is a I massive mean, the clothing starting to come back around well, but also it feels different, you know, like I'm 49 and July, I'm celebrating half a century. Like, and it feels Congrats. nothing like I thought it was going to be. It feels good. Yeah. 50 is not that bad. I always no. say the only birthday I had trouble with was 30. I don't know why, but it just seemed like 30, you know, it was like, I gotta, I gotta get serious. My, you know, I gotta get serious. I gotta yeah. get it together. But like 40 and 50, I it didn't bother me. That's Whatever. I'm a little slower, you know, a little pickier <laughs> maybe, but it's <was> fine. <laughs> yeah. But you finally get to that age where you can do what you want. You know, up well, until yeah. a certain age, you're you're you know, you're working for somebody else or you're you're building. You know, it's not it's not, yeah, you're building. But once you get up in your uh, 40s and 50s, then you can actually start enjoying all the hard work. Yeah, yeah that's so true. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty uh that's pretty great. Um, yeah, so that so the documentary film is coming out with the 80th anniversary of the books. The first Pippi Longstocking book. I know yeah. the 80th one well, anyway. So that will be uh 2025. Um I'm going for the summer, but the actual um month to to year would be November 2025. But anyway, somewhere between summer and November of 2025, it'll be available. But I did release the first teaser, the first sneak peek on yeah. my social media so people can see it. That's exciting. I, I love that we're going back and doing the documentaries 
on on these uh, shows and movies that that we yeah. loved growing up. Yeah, because as fans, that's what we want. We just want to kind of relive that moment for a minute. Yeah, and we want to see like the behind the scenes and yeah. hear all the stories of what, you know, what really happened. Yeah. Like all, yeah. Like the yeah. Goonies, I was watching part of a documentary about that. And when they built the ship, they didn't actually show it to them, like the massive ship in the Goonies when they find the treasure. They Is that didn't so let that it would shock them when they saw it? Yes. And so when they actually showed it to them and they were rolling, Josh Bro Brolin, Josh Broylin, Brolin, Brolin, he started swearing. <laughs> so he's like, no, cut, you're a goody. You're not supposed to swear. <laughs> that yeah, that movie still holds up. It's so good. That movie is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. that re yeah, really, really good. And I'm friends with Corey Feldman. We've known each other since we were 12. Oh, yeah, Corey, uh, Corey's great. He's, yeah. I mean, he's had a he's had a rough uh, a rough time at, at different times, but just yeah. acting wise, I mean, he's so talented. Yeah, so talented. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah, uh, Tammy, this has been great. I I, I was so I wanted to, to bring you on. Hey, come on! I wanted him to tell you. So Tommy has yeah, a yeah, bring Tommy on Comic Con, and I wanted him to yeah. I wanted him to talk with you about it. Yeah, quit handing stuff off camera. Just come on. <laughs> <laughs> there you, there you go. I made it all about TV. Yeah, so I got an event coming up uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. It's a celebrity boxing Comic Con. So I'm going to have a bunch of celebrities duking it out on pay per view. How did and, you set uh, that up? That's an awesome idea. That is a big undertaking, is what that is. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just happened, you know, I was working in the film industry for a number of years and I go to Comic Cons with her and help her out occasionally. And, uh, you know, to be her assistant. And, yeah, uh, oh, I know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I put out, I started thinking about it and inspired by a bunch of people in my life and uh, that are in these various uh, roles that do things like this. And I figured I could put something like this together. I called some of my friends, celebrity friends. I'm like, you going to be in? And they're like, yeah, we're there. So, you know, I got some people coming in as hosting. Tammy's going to be hosting it with Andy Dick. So Andy Dick is going to be in there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pairing. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna, he's going to make it. Shenanigans are coming. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, then we have uh, Zach Ward. You know, he agreed. He's yeah. going to jump in. You know, yeah. if you remember uh, people who don't know uh, the Christmas Story, he was the bully in the Christmas Story, and uh, well, you know, he's going to come and be a Zach. commentary. Yeah, he was great, and he's yeah. super fun and uh, super nice. Uh, he's uh, going to commentary the event. Uh, my friend Johnny Vinoker, if you remember the movie with Carmen Electra back in the day, it's called American Vampire Story. I know and, that. Uh, yep. He was the main vampire in that whole movie, and, uh, and you know he did Savage Streets, he uh, uh, American Power Hour back in the eighties. Oh 80s. yeah, yeah. Sam, he was punk rock, and uh, so you know he's coming host it with them and do some things so you know it's gonna be a lot of fun then we got a, a fight card that's gonna be really great and i'm gonna be announcing them i can tell you one of them is a black panther his name is hassan rashid dr hassan rashid and uh and uh, such a great guy he's got a great organization company that you know he's worked with some friends of mine as well for the uh, children's youth basketball but he owns a, a dunking contest that he does he's part of the grizzlies it's a company called the grizzlies and uh, it does a lot of stuff. And we just got more and more people just coming on board. I got my whole fight card list right over here Amazing. that we're going through. And I just got to send a bunch of contracts off tonight, actually. Do you and, uh, uh, do you box? I do not. I used to do MMA years ago. Yeah. Uh, I did some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Atlanta, Georgia for a while. Uh, then I did some MMA with uh, Mikey Burnett, if anybody remembers the original UFC. Yeah. And Mikey was also uh, – he was a UFC champion back then. Then he was also in uh, – uh, what's that USC TV show that they do? The, uh, he did a comeback series uh, uh, where they brought all the UFC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen some of TV, those, yeah. The reality show that they have. And he yeah. was in the comeback series. And uh, Mikey Burnett, you know, he's a legend in the zone. But he, you know, I was lucky to be trained by him, you know, for yeah. a little bit. And yeah, uh, I've done terrible. various, no, I've done various martial <laughs> arts, you know, growing up, you know, all my friends being martial artists and training with a lot of them. And uh, so it's been fun for me, but I never boxed. Is this the first time that you've done this type of event? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you hoping so it's, for it to be like a recurring event? 
Yeah, I want to do it twice a year. So Memorial Day. So we live on this lake, Grand Lake. It's a and during the summertime, it's just a big, massive party lake. You know, everybody's on their yachts and their boats and they're out skiing and parasailing and uh, you know, sea dudes and at the marinas oh, yeah. and the yacht clubs all around here. So it's a lot of fun. So Memorial Day weekend's a busy weekend. So I, I want to do it there and uh, also want to do it on Labor Day weekend. So twice yeah, a year, the beginning, the opening season, the closing season of the lake. Yeah. Well, so. you know how that goes. Once you once you do the first one and it does uh, at least pretty well, it'll just keep building from there. Oh, yeah. And this lake is one of those places that it would definitely build because they have Aquapalooza here, which they do every year now. And it, they do it once a year, which is nice. Uh, Grand Jam. They do a bunch of really cool things out here. And there's just so many events that yeah. go on on this lake. I don't even know half of them because there's a – it's like so big, the north side of the lake, we don't even go there because we're stuck here all the time because there's just so much to do on this side. And so I haven't even partaked in any of the events on the north side of the lake. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun around here. Well, so if if someone want, is interested in going, where do they go to find out about it? Uh, they'll be on pay-per-view. They can go to celebrityboxingcomiccon.com mm -hmm. and they can purchase some tickets. To, we will be announcing the... Uh, are putting these sales for the uh, pay-per-view up soon. So just they'll stay tuned on there. And that's where all the announcements will be made. Okay. Uh, we have, you know, so celebrityboxingcomiccon.com. And also they can follow Tammy at TammyAaron.com. And she'll post about it as well through all her social media. And uh, so, yeah, yeah it I mean, it's like a great event. I, yeah, fingers crossed. We and the really location know. is cool too. It's at the Lakeshore Bliss Resort. So it is right on the water. So the whole event is like around this cove and there's all these spots for hundreds of vendors that we have coming. Oh, big, yeah, like the big boxing tent we had for the celebrities doing the Comic-Con, which is me and then Andy Dick and all the oops, all the fighters. So then there's this beautiful building where we'll be doing all that. There's like 15 food trucks. It's a big event. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to make sure we get about 300 vendors and you know, and then on that, on Sunday, so Friday is all music, so it's concert series. I don't have my hat, but I normally have all my gear on. Yeah. But uh, uh, so Friday is going to be music all day and vendors so people can have fun, shop. Saturday is going to be uh, music, vendors, and, uh, and the whole weekend, uh, all the celebrities that will be there, they'll be signing autographs, you oh, know, for cool. all the fans. So there'll be yeah. a whole building where they'll be in there signing autographs and meet and greets. And then uh, Saturday be fight night about five o'clock and then uh, central time and Sunday will be a wrestling event. So I partnered up with another group and they're going to be doing a wrestling event. Sorry, our dog's barking. He's old. And so <laughs> well, when he and needs help, he needs it right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when he calls, he, he's like, I'm, I'm ready for it. But uh, yeah, Sunday will be a wrestling event and a DJ contest. And uh, so, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, it's a whole three day weekend of festival, you know, and uh, music vendors, boxing and wrestling and and everything else you can think of. Yeah, it sounds awesome. That sounds like a yeah. good weekend. Absolutely. And if anybody's interested in being a sponsor or vendor and coming on, they're more welcome to contact me through the website. Yeah. And uh, if they want to be a part of this, you know, we're always, you know, got open door for somebody that's wanting to promote their business. Yeah, I love that. Best of luck with that. You'll have to you'll have to swing back after and let us know how. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're gonna be filming it. It'll be live. There'll be everybody will be able to watch it, but then we'll be putting a DVD collection so people can see, you know, after each event. Oh, we'll yeah. Thanks so everybody can, you know, continually watching the entire event, not just the fighting and the music. Oh, uh, we're talking some big headliner music that'll be our halftime show. Mm -hmm. Uh we're working on it right now. I'm not really gonna announce them. But uh, just, yet. just yet, but, you know, it's a pretty big band that wants to come in and do our halftime show, which, you know, pretty. Yeah, that's forward. exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what it. Kind of, yeah. What kind of uh, what kind of music do they sing? Is it rock? Is it country? What, what do they say? Rock. Rock and roll. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That'll go good with celebrity boxing. I oh, it will. You know, it's a little click, click, boomish. And uh, high energy. If that hinted off anything, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, no, that's it. awesome yeah, yeah that's, so. that's really good well yeah thanks for jumping on and telling us about it because yeah you. that's right up our alley that's awesome yeah it's all fun stuff yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be a blast the whole weekend 
Yeah, yeah hosted by terrific. Tammy Aaron. Could be long stalking. You can't beat that. No. Nah. And they, and then Andy Dick, you know, he's been a good, dear friend of mine for a long time. You know, well, so as a host, he can be hilarious. He's going to be super funny. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be really good. Well, so so Tammy, before before I let you go, uh, yeah. run through all your social medias. Okay, so uh, you can go to my link tree, which is uh, on TammyArn.com, or it's the link in all my bios for just all the social media and YouTube and and all that stuff. And if you want to buy Pippi autograph, Pippi March T shirts, the whole deal, go to shoppippi.com. And uh, yeah, but when you go, if you're looking for my events, I go and do Comic Cons two, three times a month all over the country. Yeah, that's all over the United States. It's awesome. I love it so much. And I also I film recaps for my YouTube, my socials. But anyway, so uh, you can find those on my link tree. It's like you know mile long. <laughs> and definitely check out Retro Mania, August 21st through the 25th. That is going to be an epic, epic experience in Branson, Missouri. Yeah. I know. I'm going to look into that. That, that, that sounds awesome. That you you you've given me two good events there. now. Yeah. yeah. You definitely should show up to uh, and do your podcast out there. Uh, yeah. At the Retro Mania. I think you'd have a blast. Yes. I yeah. think I would. Yeah. And we do that. My son and I, we travel to different events and, and cover. So, yeah. I'd, we never been to Branson. So. Branson's fun. Yeah. I mean, Branson, they got Silver Dollar City. Uh, you know, it's the whole town is like a theme park. You want a zip line for like 10 miles. They got the craziest zip line out there. Uh, you know, it's just every, everything in Branson's okay. fun. A lot yeah. of music, theater, plays, uh, just theme parks, everything's in Branson. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's very uh, Nashville, Austin yeah. type of feel. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And they're actually thinking about doing that stuff out here where we live. That right 10 minutes down the road, uh, they're talking about putting a big $2 billion theme park called American Heartland right here. Really? So they're, they're talking about being as oh, yeah. big as Disney. As soon as they announced it, like the real estate prices went. Oh, yeah. Literally we're we're, we're like, running into some of that here in West Virginia. They they turned some land into national parks and immediately the real estate in the area just you know exploded. Yeah, it was like you can get an acre around here, not on the water, but you can get an acre of land out here uh, on some farmland, you know, seven grand. Yeah. You know, like land is, you know, fairly cheap out here. And then all of a sudden they announced it, everybody overnight, my <laughs> land for sale, 30,000 an acre. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I don't know who set that marker, but someone set that tone overnight. And I'm like, because her and I have been talking about opening up our own uh, little resort, you know, we're yeah. going to turn a bunch of old houseboats and uh and make them cabins on the land oh, that's you know a good idea. yeah and call it you know pippi's paradise resort and uh and so we're talking about doing that so we're in that process mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they announce this thing and we're land hunting and we're looking for things they announce this thing everything went i'm like well that all is out of our budget now <laughs> yeah. there goes our 20 acres yeah that money. sucks <laughs> <laughs> At seven grand an acre was affordable. At uh, thirty grand an acre for twenty acres, like well, they just changed the entire game. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, it's like oh, but wait, if you go way, way past Benita, maybe yeah. we could. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you know, it our new whatever. resort is now an hour away from this area. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, the good was the bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you both. This has been terrific. We we'll have to do it again. Maybe maybe we can catch you at a convention. We'll just do it live. Yeah, That'd absolutely. Yeah. So you'll be in Fort Myers next week, and Sunday. if you go to tamarin.com, she announced all her meet and greets and where she's going to be at. Yeah. You just hunt one of them down. Mm -hmm. I stopped in uh, Fort Myers. I was going to uh, I was flying to Miami, and they rerouted us to Fort Myers because uh, Donald Trump was landing in Miami. So we. They oh, wow. rerouted us. We we landed, never got off the plane, waited an hour, and then they flew us to Miami. <laughs> <Nice>. so, <laughs> it just added a couple hours to the trip. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right, hold on one like second. I mean, who doesn't love Pippi Longstocking? So she was in the movie The New Adventures of uh, Pippi Longstocking. Um back in the 80s and it was terrific i hope you're as big a fan of uh, tammy's as as i am always loved uh pippy um uh heidi 
Little Women. Those were always uh, uh, classical books that I enjoyed when I was younger. I enjoyed the. Uh, uh, I, I did. I was heavy into the classical reading up until middle school. So a lot of that stuff I was reading in elementary school, which may have been a little uh, ahead of of what you would you know the type of book you would normally read at that age. But I loved it. I was so nerdy back then, and I got on a, a reading kick, and I'd read through all the classics. So it didn't matter uh, what it was. I was reading it, but Pippi was one that I always enjoyed. Thought it was, uh, thought it was really, uh, really well done. So I was excited when the movie came out. Um, Tammy was terrific in it. I mean, she really gave a, a hell of a performance. She's talented, uh, talented actress. I'm sure she was and is a terrific uh, model as well. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, I love the fact that she she's doing two or three conventions a month. So if you want to meet her in person, she's out there. So so look her up. Um, if you're finding us for the first time, thank you. So happy that you're here. Um, you can support us, and it's easy and free. And a couple a couple quick ways you could do that. If you like to watch our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please just subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything. Really helps us out. If you prefer to listen. You know, wherever you listen to your uh, podcast ad or whatever application you're using, just subscribe there. Helps us as well. Um, IMDB, which is the entertainment database, uh, recently named us a top 100 podcast. We can't believe it. So happy and, and honored uh, for that. There's 15 million podcasts and growing every day. So to be on anybody's top 100 list, pretty special um if you go to imdb.com look up the two opinionated podcast that'll bring our page up that's free and that's all you got to do once that page comes up it really does uh, help us out just having the traffic on it thank you guys so so much till next time bye everybody hi everybody i'm once again here to ask for your support it's been a big year for the two opinionated podcast Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple of easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors 
on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know we've got producers, directors, um, video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so so much. Until next time, bye everybody.